Hi, this is Fabrice, and today I want to talk to you about this, this scene in Unreal Engine. But before I do that, I would like to show you this website. I was uh, very recently introduced to the idea of a kit bash, which funnily enough, I'd never uh, wasn't aware of and looked on the internet and found this uh, website by Vitaly Bulgarov. Amazing, amazing work of modeling and uh, I encourage you to go and check it out and I saw his store here and found this mega structure which I thought uh, found very very intriguing in terms of the absolute uh, perfection in modeling and there's some really interesting videos about him talking about his technique modeling in soft image interestingly and also so I purchased this mega structure um, pack and I'll show you that in a minute but I also was really seduced by these wonderful renders I suppose V-Ray uh, completely beautifully clean and glossy reflections and I uh, wondered how long or if we were wouldn't it be amazing to be able to achieve this sort of this quality this level of quality this accuracy in the reflections in uh, Unreal. Well, it seems that this day has actually arrived, or nearly, nearly. <laughs> Always uh, never quite achieve perfection. But here you're looking at a uh, Unreal scene on a screen percentage 200, hence the extreme lag, and I won't dare to show you the frame rate. But um, I'll just show you very quickly, I got these uh, assets from 3ds Max and I'll show you a little bit of the scene in a second and just kind of uh, had fun learning <laughs> well just basically doing the uh, activity of kit bashing putting things together and came up with this sort of fortress looking f um, Miyazaki esque <laughs> uh, moving castle um, sort of fortress and this kind of empty desolate place and but it really uh, is pretty amazing to see the amount of detail that we are able to see and the accuracy of the reflections really uh, give it a very very strong sense of realism and this looks very very promising for the future and again for st sort of storytelling because the atmosphere to me um, this kind of really dark uh, uh, mood here uh, is very inspiring so uh, I will uh, actually sort of show you uh, um, how I went about it, and I'll. Uh, but I've done another scene which is a little bit lighter in uh, frame rate, so I'll swap over to that. And uh, actually, I'll show you the max scene first. Great. So we've got the max scene, and just to zoom in on some of these elements, you'll see that uh, as a wireframe, this is extremely complex. It's incredibly well modeled, though. If we do um, edge faces, you can see that everything's sort of triangulated and all the joints are um, properly meeting and welded. So this is, I think this is absolute uh, mastery craftsmanship here. But anybody who's uh, familiar with the Unreal workflow, 3ds Max to Unreal workflow, the unwrapping on this would be uh, quite a feat. If not to say, I've tried to uh, um, add a UV auto unwrap on some of these meshes and Max actually crashed. So that would may rendered that um, activity pretty much impossible. So let's have a look at the Unreal file. So just a quick segment here to compare uh, the 4.22 version without ray tracing and the one with ray tracing. So I'll show you how I've built We'll rebuild this scene more or less from scratch, well, the lighting at least, in uh, just a minute. But just going back to the uh, non-ray trace version, you can see straight away that we've got our uh, shadow maps, which are kind of give, you know, uh, the amazing effect that uh, Unreal already uh, is known for. But when you compare, you see that the shadows are quite blurry and quite imprecise. And we have this sort of bounding effect sometimes that happens when we have uh, the light that's parallel to the wall. 
also the reflections you can see are uh, disappear when they come out of the frame which is a bit of a shame and many uh, other things the uh, ambient occlusion here i think is a little bit gamey in look and not as good as it could be and i tend to sort of turn it off and that's where we start working with the light maps instead but we're not doing that this time because of the complexity of the geometries we're working with so all in all we're sort of losing a little bit of detail especially in the distance where things tend to get quite flat on the contrary now we're looking at the ray tracing options and again i've cheated here i like to put the screen percentage up to 200 percent if I'm not going to be moving around very much and it stops the flickering uh, going on too much. But you can see that we've got immediately these beautiful shadows, very, very realistic. Uh, there's a little bit of grain in the uh, denoising effect, but I actually quite like this. It gives it a little bit of a underground feel of uh, software being written. And by the way, this is uh, artificial intelligence kind of working under uh, your eyes there. So. Uh, it's interesting and you can see here on the dome the precision of the indents in the surface and the uh, chamfers and everything are very very um, precise there's almost no anti-aliasing problem uh, as far as I can see and this the sharpness of the image is pretty uh, incredible so let's uh, start building the lighting on here it's very very simple and I'll show you that in the uh, next bit so I've got my map I've prepared here, uh, but just with the meshes. So you see, I uh, sh dragged and dropped a few more meshes here around in this scene and built this sort of another kind of structure very, very quickly. And, um, but I've done nothing else to it. So let's rebuild it from scratch as it were. So first thing I'm going to do is add some atmospheric fog which is going to give us this uh, background uh, color and then exponential height fog as well. And with the exponential height fog, I'm going to change the fall off because I want it to sort of be covering all of the sky. And so bring the fall off way down and then I want it a little bit more white than this. And uh, so next thing I can now do, I've got a background I can, uh, well, actually, let's add a directional light first and link it to the atmospheric fog, which is not going to make that much difference at this stage. And then I'll put it in the um, behind the building like this. And also, I'm uh, going to put the skylight here. And now you can see that suddenly everything kind of comes to, uh, to life. And I'm going to set that to movable and cast ray traced shadows. So now we've got this really uh, strong uh, lighting effect coming from both the skylight and the shadows from the sun. And that's it. That's a really very, very simple, easy setup. And uh, so I'll show you around uh, this map a little bit more. Maybe um, here what's fun is to see the frame rate we're able to get. So if I press play. So I've in the meantime swapped over to one I prepared earlier that I've got this little element here that's got collisions enabled to uh, show how this dynamic scene is really being rendered all the ambient occlusion and uh, lighting and reflections and everything is absolutely uh, and i'm getting very sick now <laughs> after this uh, ride on the elevator so yeah and just to show a little bit how the pr that precision again is kind of really present all in the shadows as well and we have got gi in uh,